And that's where the church comes in, that we're to have leaders in the church that are teaching the children of God how to grow up. This was the call of the fivefold ministries when we read it in Ephesians chapter 4, that the ministry gifts were given for the edifying of the church, for the building up of the body of Christ, till we all come to the fullness of the measure of Christ, of Jesus himself. So, um, and mm -hmm. Just in case someone doesn't know, when you say the church, what are you referring to? The, the believers, those born again members of the body of Christ. And that would include the Catholic Church, the Protestant Church? Well, see, that church is a misnomer in that the church is now, the word church mm -hmm. is now related to religions. The, the, the word church is now related to denominations. The word church is related to buildings. But the word church that I'm referring to is when Jesus said, I will build my church upon this revelation knowledge. He was referring to a specific group of people and the word church is a word that means a group of people that have been called out from the masses to follow a certain teacher or teaching or ruler. So in this instance, we're speaking of the only true and living God. We're speaking of God. Of God, the Lord. His church. The Lord Jesus and His called out ones, His church, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is not a building made with hands. It's people, people that have been born again. They've been born into his kingdom and adopted into his family. Mm -hmm. And so this was what Jesus was talking to when he was speaking to Nicodemus. And Nicodemus came to him saying, in effect, if I can paraphrase it, I want to be a part of your party. I want to be a part of what you have going on. I can see by what you're doing that God is with you. And Jesus, after getting this praise from Nicodemus, he did not address the praise. He told him, he said, Nicodemus, he said, unless Un, uh, unless you're born again, you can neither see nor enter the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. Because without entering into the kingdom of God, without entering into the church, you're not among those that have been born again. Mm -hmm. You're not a member of his family. And this is who he was giving this authority to. He didn't say to the world, all authority has been given to me, so everyone in the world go, go out. He's speaking to the members of his church, to his disciples, his followers. Now we have people claiming to be followers, but it's only one way to become a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's to be born again, to enter into his kingdom, to enter in under his authority, and to be born into his kingdom is to be translated from the kingdom of darkness into his kingdom. So uh, back to our scripture, when we were saying, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men, number one, we have to know that he is good. And scripture tells us he is the only one that is good. So the standard by which we measure God is by his standard. His standard. So anything below his standard is evil. <laughs> and that's the way, that's the way he set it up. Now, we might not agree with that. We might say, well, there are bad areas. There's some things that are not good. They're not really good. They're not really bad. No, he is an absolute God. He has an absolute standard. And his standard says either it measures up to my standard of good or it's evil. There's no in-between. There's no gray area. This is from a previous study I did about knowing God and some of his attributes, nature. And... Uh, Scripture shows us that God needs nothing from his creation. Over in Psalms 50, I believe it tells us in his word, he says, if I was hungry, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> I mean, what That's are we going to do, right? What are, we, what are you going to feed him with? <laughs> right. And then over in um, Romans 11:34, it says, who has knowledge of the mind of the Lord? Or who has taken part in his purposes? Or who has first given to him and it will be given back to him again? For of him and through him and to him are all things to be the glory forever, so be it. So God is the king of the earth and he has given us authority over all that he has created. And that was all mankind until the fall of Adam when the fellowship and the relationship was, was broken.
So now we as, quote, the church, we are to then teach ourselves how to praise and then teach others how to praise because it's not something that you would do. It's not a feeling. It's a worthiness. Well, you notice that we praise him for things. We have one up less than a minute. I just wanted to point out okay. it's always for something, for his goodness, for his mercy, for his kindness, for his love. It's not just praise. It's praise that's directed toward him for something that he has done, and he has done it all. So we want you to get into the Word and read the Scriptures and see how often we are to praise him for his goodness and for his mercy. I mean, it's found throughout the Bible, and it says faith comes by hearing, and so that's why he keeps telling us over and over and over that he is good and that he is merciful. So we want to get this down within us, deep in our heart, so that when those hard times come, we won't praise him because we're having the good times and we will not stop praising him because we have the bad time, but we will praise him continually because He's God good. is good all the time. All the time.